Hey guys, and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll be looking at the often overlooked crop option within Adobe Illustrator. There's a link below this video where you can download the template file so you can easily follow along. So let's jump into Illustrator now and I'll hand you over to our lead designer, Rory, who will take you through some of the useful examples of where it can be used effectively. Thanks, Ross. So jumping straight in, we have our template file open in Illustrator here. And as you can see, we have a few examples of the kind of thing we can create with the help of the Pathfinder crop function in Illustrator. So you may have used this before, you may not have, but it's certainly one that I think gets overlooked a lot over the more primitive Pathfinder options we have. So we're going to jump straight in, move over to the right hand side, and we have another artboard set up with a few different objects here so we can save a bit of time and just jump straight into this. Now this feature applies to really any kind of vector design you're working with so although we've got these examples they are just to highlight some of the cases where this function can be useful. So starting with these two objects over on the left hand side as you can see here we've got some vectorized texture which we have created in the same way as we did in our video on creating a stamp effect. If you've not seen that I'd recommend going and checking that out it's very easy to create an effect like this but in this case I want to be able to apply this to another shape so we have another compound path here you can see we have a circle knocked out of this hexagon here and I want to be able to apply this texture to this shape above now with the crop feature this is very easy to do all I need to make sure is that they are overlapping so I'm just gonna select both of them I'll make sure they are centered against one another now it's important to remember that that the object on top is what the object below will get cropped to. So this works in a very similar way as clipping masks. If you are not familiar with clipping masks, we also have a video on that as well, so be sure to check them out. However, this applies more specifically to vector graphics, and this is what's known as a destructive process, so the areas that are going to be cropped out will essentially be deleted. So I'm going to select both of them, and we can find our crop option within our Pathfinder. So I have this set up on the right hand side or I can access this from my properties as well. If you don't have either of these set up already you can go to window and down to pathfinder here but I'm just going to jump straight in. Now it's found over on the bottom row of options here and it's the third from the right as you can see if I hover over this it says crop and if I just click this you can see we're now going to be left with our hexagon shape with this texture applied to it. Now if I just press undo you may be thinking why can't I use the intersect option which is more commonly used and that's because with this texture we have a lot of different paths going on. With the intersect option you can only really use this with two objects at a time so they have to be much more simplified whereas this we can basically crop a complex vector design or multiple vectors to one shape so that's what we're doing in this case I'll click it again and we get the desired effect now there are a few more uses we can do with this I have an array of circles here now these are just simple circles with a stroke applied now one thing to note is that this option does not work with stroked vectors in the background so we can't crop stroked vectors so an example of this I'll just grab my rectangle tool and what I'll do is just drag out a square just over a section of these circles I'll flip this to a fill now if I want to crop these circles to the area of this square I would usually just click and drag over this go back to my crop option if I click this you can see it's not going to work so I'm gonna press command Z and what I need to do in this case is make sure that these stroked circles are outlined so all I'm doing here is clicking and dragging over them. Go up to object, expand, click OK. Now these are outline strokes. You can see this is switched to a fill now. These aren't grouped as well. It's worth noting that you don't have to have the object sitting behind your cropping object grouped. I can just click and drag over everything. Click my crop option and you can see we're getting the desired effect again. And as you can see, these are all completely vector and none of the circles that were sitting outside of the square are left. So I can prove that by going to my outline view. As you can see, the 
only paths being left here are those of the circles within that square. One thing to note though, if I wanted to recolor this, if I select our newly cropped area, you can see over in my fill we have a question mark, so that denotes that there is more than one fill being applied. When we apply the crop option, the areas where there is no fill, they still get a shape created with no fill. So what I mean by that is if I double click into this group, we have our sections that have this grey fill here. However, if I hover over in between that, we also have shapes made that don't have any fill or stroke applied to them. Now it's very easy just to get rid of these areas. Now that I've double clicked into this group, I'm just going to select one of these areas that doesn't have any fill or stroke. If I go up to the top where my control panel is, we have an option to select similar objects. So if I just click that, it's going to select all of these areas that have no fill or stroke and I can simply delete them and now if I click and drag over this you can see we're only getting the areas that have the grey fill. So I can now change this to any colour I want, I'll just pick this yellow colour, I can double click out and there you go. This is the same for the object we've already created, I'm just going to double click on this. Another way we can do this is now that I'm in the isolated group view I can simply select the black area and this is sometimes easier doing it this way. I'll go back up to my select similar objects option, click that, so now that I know all of the black areas are selected and then I can simply press command X or control X on a PC to cut this away. If I now press command A that's going to select all of the shapes that don't have any fill or stroke that we want to get rid of. I can just delete them and then I can just press command F to paste the black areas back in place. And because I've done this all within the group, if I double click out we're still able just to select the whole thing, there are no small areas ungrouped that are going to get left behind if we move this. Okay, on to the next option, we have an example of a circle here and this actually has a pattern applied to it. So if I go to my swatches panel, as you can see in here, if I double click on this pattern, this is just a simple zigzag vector pattern that we're applying and this is absolutely fine but there are sometimes cases where you want to essentially vectorize the pattern you've got within the shape shape you've got. So in this case I may want to recolor these zigzags. Now I could recolor the pattern itself but we're quite limited in what we can do with that. So what I'm going to do with this circle selected is go up to object, expand, click OK and you can see the fill has been expanded and now you can see if I hover over some of these lines that we actually have the paths appearing so I know that this pattern has now been expanded. If I go to my outline view by pressing command Y, that's control Y on a PC, you can see the way this pattern is being applied. So we've got all of these tiles covering the whole circle. Now that's fine but it's not ideal for being able to now edit the colours and things. So again we can use the crop feature. So with this simply still selected I'm going to go back to my pathfinder, click the crop option and we now have the pattern only being applied within this circle. Again if I switch back to my normal view we have it here. Now again this is only working because this pattern is working with fill shapes or filled objects and there are no strokes. If you're trying to do this with a pattern that consists of stroked lines or paths it's not going to work so bear that in mind. But what I can now do again is double click into this. I could select one of these shapes as you can see it's all cut up. We'll use our select similar objects option again and that's going to select all of the shapes that have the same fill colour and then I can use my unite shape builder option just to merge all of them together. I can do the same with the other colour as well. So using this crop feature in combination with the select similar objects feature in the control panel is very quick and easy to create things like this. And now as you can see I can go in and I can change the colour of these if I want to. So I've gone from having a pattern to easily being able to vectorize this again and customize it a bit more. So I'll double click out of this group now. Last but not least we have some outlined text here and this is just another example of where this can be useful. Now again I have some stroked paths here so the first thing I'm going to do is expand them. So object, expand, click OK. These are now set to fills. Now I have multiple objects here in this text. Now it is grouped together however if I click and drag over both of these and try to use my crop feature it's only going to apply to the T because that's the topmost shape. 
Now, even though it's grouped, we're not going to be able to crop to the other characters in the word. So pressing Command Z, a way around this is to select all of this and make this a compound path. So I'm going to Object, Compound Path and Make, and you'll see it'll get rid of the fill, but this is now being treated as a single shape. So when I click and drag over both of them and apply my Crop option again, it's going to work as if these wavy lines are being cropped to a single shape, which is what we wanted. And that's really it. Very easy to use and often overlooked, but hopefully this video will have given you a good insight into the applications you can use this feature with. So there you have some simple uses of the crop option in Illustrator. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where we reveal our top five secrets to creating beautiful graphic design, along with our six steps to making money as a graphic designer. So make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.